This is the ninth video of World War I. Please follow my channel to tell you the story of World War I. At the beginning of World War I, there was no Turkey in either camp, so why did Turkey enter the war later? Before the outbreak of the war, both camps were uniting more countries. At this time, the neutral Turkey naturally attracted everyone's attention. As mentioned in the previous video, the Ottoman Turkish Empire at this time was already very weak. The main reason is that his ruling class problem is too big. The Turkish monarch is called the Sultan. The sons born to the Sultan grew up in an environment similar to seclusion. That is, born, basically grew up in a state of house arrest, once the new. Sultan ascended the throne. The other brothers of the Sultan had to be executed. So people who grew up in this environment, the mind is definitely not normal. As for the ability, they can personally eat, drink and sleep is already excellent. So the decline of Ottoman Turkey is natural. But even a declining Turkey, Turkey is after all a big country across Europe, Asia and Africa. Western powers while bullying Turkey will also win it over. So in 1903, Germany supported Turkey in building a railway from Berlin to Baghdad and also helped them train a new army. Of course, Germany had a purpose. The purpose was to cultivate a group of pro-German factions in the Turkish army, and it would be more convenient to penetrate German forces in various fields in Turkey. Turkey happily agreed, but no matter what Germany planned. These were good things for Turkey, and at that time it was not only good relations with Germany, relations with Britain are also very good, but because of a trifle, Britain completely offended Turkey. So what trifle? Before World War I, Turkey ordered two dreadnoughts from Britain, and later after the outbreak of World War I, these two warships were requisitioned by the British Navy, and there was no compensation. Turkey paid all the money when signing the contract. These money were still collected by the Turkish government from all the people, so this move by the British offended all Turks at once. So Turkey made an alliance request to Germany, but the Germans' requirements were too high, saying that Turkey must put troops into all fronts, and I will ally with you. Of course, Turkey is also betting on both sides. On the one hand, it wants to ally with Germany, and on the other hand, it secretly asks the sworn enemy Tsarist Russia, saying that it is possible for us to change from enemies to friends. At the beginning of World War I, Tsarist Russia had been planning that as long as it won Germany and Austria-Hungary, it would go south, occupy Constantinople, control the Turkish Straits, make the people of the Mediterranean like our daily Eba bread, like our vodka, and then rush out of the Strait of Gibraltar when there was only one country in the world, and that was Russia. Wouldn't this wish not have been fulfilled if an alliance with Turkey had been concluded? Therefore, Tsarist Russia categorically refused to form an alliance, and at this time, things changed. Two German warships, Gobin and Breslau, shelled the French port in Algeria, were blocked in the Mediterranean by the Anglo-French forces. There was no way to return to Germany, but to run to the Turkish Strait. Turkey's German advisors wanted to let these two warships into the Straits, and Germany said that the two warships were given to Turkey, including the ship's soldiers. So the German sailors on the ship changed into uniforms and directly became the Turkish Navy to continue to serve. Turkey is very happy to get two battleships for free, especially the battlecruiser Gobin, and the other Breslau is a light cruiser. But at this time, Turkey still has not made up its mind with whom to ally. The Germans saw that Turkey received two warships without any intention of alliance. They were very anxious, through various ways to say that Turkey has no international diplomatic etiquette, received gifts without any thanks. Think that when our Emperor His Majesty visited Constantinople, he also helped Turkey build a fountain, but Turkey still did not say anything, then in the face of such an untrustworthy country. Then what my Germany did, it was justified. So Germany secretly ordered the two warships, which had flown the Turkish flag, to enter the Black Sea and fiercely shell two cities in Tsarist Russia, Odessa, and Sevastopol. Of course, these two cities now belong to Ukraine, and Sevastopol is illegally occupied by Russia. The action of the battleship shelling Russian cities frightened Turkey and quickly explained to Tsarist Russia that this matter has nothing to do with Turkey. It was not done by Turkey, Tsarist Russia said, warships flying the Turkish flag. You say it was not done by Turkey? Like it's really so. So how did the Turkish Straits come about? Did it fly over? 
but Turkey repeatedly explained the process of Germany's gift of warships, and in the end, Tsarist Russia still gave Turkey an ultimatum, demanding that Turkey expel all Germans in Turkey, otherwise terminate any communication and prepare for war. At this time, Turkey has received too many benefits from Germany and cannot do this at all, only choose to ally with Germany. On the German side, there is an additional big country to join. It seems that the strength has increased greatly, but in fact, Turkey's strength is very weak. At that time, the population of Turkey was 36 million. Half of them were Arabs who wanted independence. Except for the unfinished Baghdad railway, there were almost no railways in the country. The roads were very poor. The bridge load was very low. If a large caliber shell was transported from Ankara to the Russian-Turkish border, it would. Take 35 days to walk with a camel. At the beginning of World War I, the entire strength of the Turkish army was a total of 36 divisions, and later expanded by 70 divisions of the new army, but the equipment training was very poor. Soon after entering the war, Turkey attacked the Caucasus controlled by Tsarist Russia, and was easily defeated by the Russian army. It can be seen that the combat effectiveness of the Turkish army is very poor. Nevertheless, the Russians still feel a little dangerous, although Russia wants to fight Turkey, but not now, at least until Austria-Hungary is defeated, can attack Turkey, so Tsarist Russia asked its ally Britain to take action to force Turkey to withdraw from the Caucasus. British Navy Secretary Winston Churchill suggested that the British Navy attack, attack the Dardanelles, and then land on the Gallipoli Peninsula, and finally occupy the Ottoman capital Constantinople. In an effort to defeat Turkey in one fell swoop, and after success, it may also pinch Austria. Hungary from this direction, in addition, the British have other ideas, because after victory, they can control post-war Turkey, which is very tempting for Britain, a sea power country, so Britain, together with the French Navy, gathered 62 warships and prepared to attack. And the Turkish Navy at this time only did not listen to its command of two warships gifted by Germany. So, the commander of the British and French fleet, Sackville Carden, believed that if the minesweeping work went well, Constantinople could be occupied in three days at most, and on February 25, 1915, the British and French fleets arrived in the Dardanelles and began to shell the positions of the Turkish army on both sides, and in just one day, the outermost artillery positions and fortresses of the Turkish army were all destroyed, and the minesweepers of the Anglo-French coalition carefully and quietly entered the strait to clear mines, because Turkey installed a large number of mines in the strait, but the minesweeping work was very unsuccessful. Until early March, it finally barely cleared a road, a huge formation of battleships, finally ready to attack Constantinople, and at this time, the ammunition of the Turkish coastal defense fortress basically ran out, the Turkish. Government was also ready to escape. Suddenly the situation changed. A Turkish dinghy sneaked to the already cleared sea through 20 mines. The first attack of the Anglo-French army, just four battleships hit mines. Some were directly bombed and sunk. Some were sunk by coastal artillery, and the fleet retreated in a panic. In fact, there was no surface force on the Turkish side at all. On land, the British and French troops sent several thousand marines to land, and although the Turks lost their perimeter, do not forget that they had German advisers who guided the Turkish army to lure the enemy deep and then counterattacked and quickly beat the landing force back. The naval offensive was blocked, and there was no good solution, so the Anglo-French coalition army was ready to revise the battle plan and attack by the army, in fact, the British and French did not want to think that the Anglo-French combined fleet had a 62-0 superiority and could not win against Turkey, so could the army win? The Anglo-French army in Egypt and Greece hastily assembled an expeditionary force of nearly 80,000 men, mainly composed of Australians and New Zealanders, commanded by General Hamilton, who had the reputation of a poet general, a courteous gentleman who had participated in the Boer War and had rich combat experience, but he knew nothing about the situation on the Turkish side. And the order he received could not be simpler, directing the expeditionary force to invade Gallipoli and destroy the enemy there, and his enemy was commanded by General Sanders. Turkey's newly formed 5th Army numbered 84,000 men. On the night of April 25th, 
1915, the British, French, and Australian New Zealand regiments landed on the European side of the Dardanelles, and the soldiers of the Australian New Zealand Legion, who had not received night landing training, coupled with unfamiliar terrain, landed in the wrong place. The bay where they landed in the wrong place is called the Australia and New Zealand Legion Bay today, and the landing of the Anglo-French army was not smooth, the army's firepower was very weak, and it was suppressed on the beach by the Turkish army, repeatedly impacted, and only barely established a small beachhead, which may be driven into the sea at any time. Wasn't the Turkish army weak? Why did it suddenly become powerful? In fact, the reason here is very simple. The commander of this anti-landing operation, Mustafa Kemal, who later became the father of the Turkish Republic, at this time, he was just an army colonel. During the battle, he said to his subordinates, I do not expect you to attack. I order you to die. He dares to say this because he himself is fighting with the heart of mortality. Kemal personally led the troops, occupied the high ground near the coast. After a night of melee, both sides suffered. Heavy casualties, the Entente troops who had landed, trapped on the beach and unable to move, the two sides reached a stalemate, it was summer, the battlefield was full of corpses, a large number of soldiers were sick, dysentery, diarrhea, intestinal fever, everything, non-combat attrition was very serious, the British side hurriedly transferred three divisions of British troops to land at the same time. The Turkish side was also regrouping troops and preparing to meet 1915 on August 6th of that year. Three divisions of British troops landing in the northern Suvla Bay. The defense on this side was relatively weak. The landing did not encounter much resistance, but unfortunately, the troops were slow to move after landing, neither expanded the landing field, nor consolidated the beachhead, occupied the commanding heights. Sanders urgently transferred, including Mustafa Kemal, nearly 20,000 Turkish soldiers, the British army at this time, only to attack inland, soon fell into a bitter battle, the two sides stalemated. The stalemate between the two sides reached September. The landing troops on the side of the Anglo-French army had reached 90,000, but the war did not progress. Hamilton was dismissed and replaced by General Monroe. At this time, the weather in Turkey became sharply cold. The plague was reduced. Frostbite began to spread in the troops again, and even some people were frozen to death. The war continued until November. The British Secretary of State Marshal Kitchener came to the front to inspect and wanted to understand why the war with Turkey was deadlocked. Cassina found that the troops were exhausted and could not continue, so it was decided to retreat. 90,000 Entente troops divided into several groups to secretly evaluate Gallipoli. The secrecy work was done particularly well. The Turks did not notice at all the entire retreat operation, a total of less than 10 casualties. On January 9, 1916, the last soldier of the Australian New Zealand Regiment left the beach, the Battle of Gallipoli ended. The British side tried to land and Turkey completely failed. The Battle of Gallipoli was the largest landing battle in the First World War, fought for nearly a year, and there were many casualties on both sides. 44,000 soldiers on the Entente side were killed in battle, 100,000 wounded, 10,000 soldiers were killed and 14,000 wounded on the Ottoman Turkish side. And the bodies of many fallen soldiers were buried on the spot, and until today, when local farmers cultivate they can often dig up the remains the entente army lost countless materials and it took turkey nearly 10 months to clean up the battlefield in this battle turkey's biggest gain is kemal he later became a national hero laid the foundation for his later creation of a modern turkey british war historian john fuller commented that this battle was strategically designed extremely ingeniously but the tactical execution was quite stupid the battle failed the impact was very large the british side not only the purpose of supporting russia was not achieved the desire to invade turkey was in vain and the secretary of the Admiralty Churchill also resigned. Although Bulgaria joined the German side before this, it never participated in the war, and now it seems that the Anglo-French coalition army cannot even fight Turkey, and if it does not participate in the war now, Bulgaria will not get any war benefits after the German side wins. Although the British side is an industrial power, but at this time also found that the weapons reserve was consumed too quickly, a little flustered, so... 
try to increase military strength by weapons all over the world, and even noticed China, China since the end of the Qing dynasty to train the new army, to later after the Xinhai Revolution imported a large number of weapons and equipment, most of which are German Mauser rifles, Maxim machine guns, and Krupp cannons. The British like it very much. These weapons are placed in the Chinese government. There is no role. Very want to buy these weapons. But the trouble is that the Chinese Beiyang government declared neutrality at the beginning of the war. What to do? At this time, a British man who has been in Beijing for many years, Bacchus, found the British ambassador to China. He assured the British ambassador to China that he could act as an intermediary to communicate with the Chinese government and let Britain buy Chinese weapons. Bacchus made a document to buy Beiyang government weapons and equipment in China, handed it to the British Foreign Office. The document said that it had negotiated with the Chinese government and could buy 260,000 rifles. 900 machine guns and 200 cannons from the Chinese government waiting for the deposit to be paid after the deposit was paid. Immediately shipped this batch of weapons from Hubei to Fujian and then transported from Fujian to Hong Kong and from Hong Kong to Britain. The British government was particularly happy. Bacchus this person is very remarkable. Helped the British government solve the big trouble. Immediately pay the deposit. But after the deposit was paid, Bacchus and this batch of arms, there was no news. Britain found out that it was deceived. In fact, everything was made up by Bacchus. At this time, Britain, the war cannot beat Turkey, buy arms, and be deceived, can be said to be unlucky. The only thing that can get a trace of comfort is that among Germany's allies, there is a country that betrayed Germany and wants to join the British side. So which country is this? Please subscribe to my channel to tell you the story of World War I.